Right. Um, welcome to another session of financial and management accounting techniques for managers. This is unit number four, and my name is Zafar, Zafar Iqbal. This course is specifically for ATAT level four extended diploma in management. Okay, and it's very good afternoon um, and a very good sunny afternoon on a Thursday in uh, Manchester. It's very nice and lovely. And um, hopefully, uh, it should stay like this for tonight, about seven, eight o'clock, up to eight o'clock. It would be nice. Okay. Uh, Mr. Summit, you're right. Uh, yesterday, what we discussed, uh, we discussed some um, methods of uh, appraisal, accounting appraisal methods like discounted cash flow, net present value, payback methods. Yes. And um, we finished um, at that appraisal methods or so project um, methods. So you have any question of that or uh, you're okay with this? Um, no, sir. No. Okay. So today what we're going to look at the um, uh, further, um, we want to look at further um, uh, inside of uh, in this um, discussion. And we want to look at um, part B of this particular um, presentation. Okay, let me put this presentation part B. Today, we're going to look at this. Um, okay. And we're going to be looking at the um, capital investment appraisal, which is, um, yeah, we're going to be looking at the part three, I think, um, looking at the marginal costing. Costing I'm sorry? Costing and pricing. Yes, we're looking at the marginal costing principle. We're looking at the, the costing today. We're going to be looking at the um, break even and uh, costing methods, okay? We looked at the budgets uh, or did we not look at the budgets? I think we looked at the budgets the other day as well, okay? Yeah, the cash budgets and the sales budget and the flexible uh, budget and fixed budget, we talked about them. So we're going to be looking at the marginal costing and the um, the um, full absorption costing. And then we look at the break-even analysis. Then we look at um, another one or two other um, techniques that we're going to be looking at. Then we're going to talk about your assignment, okay? So marginal costing is... Um, a costing uh, method, okay, that's uh, mainly um, based on the unit contribution, i.e. how much um, a product is um, generating uh, in terms of uh, marginal costing towards the fixed cost, okay? So the contribution is very important concept in marginal costing. Now the contribution equals to sales revenue minus the variable cost, okay? Or the selling price for a product minus the variable cost for that particular product. Whatever uh, you are left with, that's known as the contribution, okay? And that contribution is um, goes towards the fixed cost of um, a particular product. So suppose you've got um, uh, a five pound, for example, you've got a selling price of five pound, um, then you've got a variable cost of four pounds. So the contribution for that particular product is one pound, okay? One pound towards the fixed cost. So if you want to recover hundred pounds as a fixed cost, how many units do you need to sell to contribute, to give you the contribution of uh, 100 pound? is you need to sell 100 units because every unit generates one pound. So you need to sell 100, unit, 100 pound of uh, uh, sales to give you this contribution. Do you understand that? All right, so you need, to you need to generate 100 pounds yes. and you need to sell 100 units because every unit gives you one pound contribution towards the fixed cost, okay? This is the concept of contribution. Okay, this is a very important contribution um, con con concept of contribution, and it only applies to variable costs, okay, not to the fixed costs, okay. Fixed costs stay the same, marginal costs change, i.e. the variable costs change, whatever you um, get from the um, deduction from the sales or from the selling price minus the variable cost will give you the contribution per unit and that will stay 
constant at all level of output and sales. Okay. What is the effect of that particular? Um, okay. What is the effect of the contribution? Is you need to generate, you need to complete, uh, you need to get the um, fixed cost covered from there. Whatever left is your profit. Okay. So this is very important um, concept. Whereas the absorption costing is a full method of costing. Okay. You do not um, rely on contribution. You rely on your full costing, i.e. fixed cost and variable cost. You total them together and you deduct it from your sales revenue, whatever is left, then you get the profit. Whereas in the marginal costing, you deduct the revenue, you did the revenue minus the variable cost, whatever you left with is the marginal cost towards your uh, fixed cost. After that, you deduct your uh, fixed cost and then you are left with the profit and loss, okay? That's the only uh, little bit more additional calculation that you need to do, okay? Okay, what's the choice between the uh, marginal cost and the absorption costing? Now, marginal costing um, is um, based on the contribution and absorption costing is based on the total costing, okay? The total cost concept is uh, which is better, it says fixed production costs are incurred in order to make output. So it's only used fair to charge all output with the share of these costs. Closing inventory will be valued uh, with accounting standards and appraising products in terms of contribution gives no indication of whether fixed costs are being covered. So therefore you have to arguments in favor of absorption costing. Absorption costing works better where uh, you know, the fixed production costs are incurred so that the, um, it gives you a fair uh, amount of um, share of these costs. It gives you a good picture of these um, costs. Okay. Otherwise, you use a marginal cost because marginal cost is um, more better. Okay. Be okay. Because it, it tells you, because it gives you um, a decision making process, it gives you a decision, a short term decision and you need to recover your fixed um, costs quickly in order to make profits. The more, uh, the more contribution towards your fixed costs, um, the more profit you're going to generate because uh, the turnover will um, make, you know, the, you will sell more, recover more quickly, and it will be better for, um, you know, for cost production, for closing uh, inventories because they will be able to generate uh, extra unit of uh, contribution towards your fixed costs. Okay? So the marginal cost concept is a little bit better than absorption costing in the sense that it gives you a very quick decision-making process. How, as I told you, if it generates more contribution, then you produce more goods. And then if you sell more goods, it will generate more profit. Whereas the absorption costing is you have to recover your uh, full costs uh, based on uh, fixed cost and the variable cost together, but it doesn't give you an idea how much to produce very quickly. So therefore you can continue producing at the end of the year, for example, then you realize how much the profit is left. Whereas the uh, marginal cost give you a good indication uh, to make your decision very earlier on. Okay. And then the managers can, um, you know, make or uh, decide which product to produce because if it's giving you more, uh, whichever product gives you more costs or variable cost uh, minus the, the selling, selling price minus the variable call, whichever product it gives you more contribution per unit, you will produce that. So suppose you have three products, A, B, and C, and only one of those products, which is B, gives you more contribution towards your fixed cost, then you um, produce that against A and C. Okay, so you disband A and C and you continue to produce more of A. Whereas in the fixed costing, you continue to produce three of them and you wouldn't know which is good or which is bad until the end of the year. Okay. Okay. Now, next thing is we need to um, look at the cost by function. Cost by function, which means cost by departments or cost by uh, functional departments. In other words, 
uh, the total costs are distributed according to function. This is marketing department, this is accounting department, this is the production department, this is the HR department. So you allocate costs by those. Um, you know, so if you are talking about the production uh, costs, we are allocating the material costs and labor costs to those you know, to, to that department and all the associated costs with supervision, machinery cost, oil cost, and everything that happens to be production cost. So the, you, you give allocate money to that particular unit, okay? Selling and distribution costs are, again, uh, you are giving to maybe in the marketing or in um, with, with your um, selling department or marketing department together, it can, uh, you know, regarding um, the advertising, delivery, salaries of sales staff, that can be given to a particular unit. Administration costs is to do with your running of the business, you know, managing and running of the businesses, including management, secretarial staff, accounting, and so on. So that's admin costs. So you allocate the administrative costs and the financial cost is, um, for example, you know, uh, looking at the uh, raising of finances from uh, other um, banks and so on. The costs that are associated with raising money to finance the business, uh, such as the loan interest and um, uh, overdraft or investment um, uh, venture loan capital, venture capital, you know, the amount of um, cost associated with these, you allocate those into the, according to the department. You can, okay, so the cost for buy function are allocated by the departments and marketing departments and so on. So you can lump these selling and distribution and marketing costs together. You can lump um, these administration costs with the admin um, department and you can financial costs also you can put sometimes with the administration as well. Okay, so it depends how your company, what's your procedure and what your, uh, you know, what your departmental um, um, distribution is like. So you can allocate these costs according to the functions. Another, another method of uh, allocating costs is either direct costs or indirect costs. Now the direct costs are costs that are used to produce goods and services that are used uh, to produce uh, goods uh, directly. They are associated with producing uh, goods and services, okay? So, um, you know, the costs like material costs and uh, labor costs, for example, they are known as the direct costs because they are producing goods and services, whereas the indirect costs are the costs that are associated uh, not with the production of the goods and services, but they are contributing uh, to that uh, department. So for example, lights and heating and um, you know, um, uh, telephone expenses, for example, um, printing costs, Okay, or service cost, or maintenance cost, or um, advertising. These are all di indirect costs. Okay, these are not related to the production, to the product and services, but they help to run the business. Okay, because otherwise, if you don't have light, how can you produce uh, goods? If you don't have, um, uh, you know, costs um, at looking at the advertisements, how can <clears throat> you um, sell your product? All right, do you understand? So the direct cost plus the indirect cost will both, when they are added together, they are known as the total costs, okay? The total costs are added to uh, your um, uh, price of a production, your price of a product. Then once they are added, then you add a profit on top of them. Then you, uh, once you added the profit on top of them, then you get some, um, um, you know, sell it then you make um, profit out of that particular product. So that we may use the total concept, which is known as the uh, absorption costing, okay? So the direct cost plus the indirect cost is equal to total cost. Plus, um, you know, when we sell them, we deduct all the total costs from the selling price or from the total sales revenue, that will give you a profit. Now using the absorption costing, okay? And marginal costing, as we told you earlier, the total costs, uh, they are deducted from the sales revenue to give you, um, uh, so sales revenue minus the uh, variable cost will give you the contribution minus uh, whatever the contributions you get, you deduct the profit from there and, sorry, uh, you deduct 
the fixed cost from there to give you a profit. Okay, so that's the only difference. So direct and indirect costs are very important, and they are either allocated or they are apportioned. Now the allocation is the total. They are gone to the total cost center, and apportion means they are divided into. They are split into two or more cost centers. Okay, they either you are allocating the total cost to a particular department or you are splitting the costs okay or you dividing the cost between departments based on uh, based on different um, uh, for example based on the total uh, square meter that you are using or based on the total um, uh, you know pay total uh, rental for example or total machine hours for example or um, you know the space that you are um, covering it depends apportionment uh, will be by different methods okay allocation will be one and only gone to this cost center and that's it so for example you department uh, you know when you are talking about the total allocation of this cost center you give this um, money you give this cost to this particular department and they uh, you know do whatever they want to do so give them a budget and that's their budget okay so for example your printing department will get x amount of money your uh, advertising department will get y amount of money and that's their uh, department they're not going to get anything else once you are planning once you're budgeting you give them this budget end of the year you ask them either they have been overspending or they have been underspending. So we talked about the adverse and the variable yesterday. So if they are spending more than they have been allocated, then they are costing you more, i.e. they are in adverse balance. They are in minus balance. If they are saving or if they are you know, better planning, if they um, are spending less than they have been given budget, then they are favorable. Then they have some money left uh, from last year and then can carry over from last year to the next year. So they'll go in what you call them plus figure, which is called the um, um, favorable. Okay. So either they can be favorable or adverse. Favorable is when they spend less than the budget and they have some. If they've gone into adverse, mean they've overspent. So these costs, you give them a budget and you can say which is the adverse and um, uh, favorable and then you. Uh, look at the budget, see whether um, you know you can um, plan better for them. Okay, so that's the whole thing. When we are talking about the managers planning for these costs or planning about these budgets or cash budget, you've got to give them uh, a chance to uh, use their skills and their abilities in order to plan. So this is we're talking about the planning. Okay, so this uh, module will. Uh, is telling you how to plan, how to interpret. Um, so as you emerge, you must be able to look at the product, which product is giving you good contribution, which product is giving you less contribution, and you go along with the better product that's giving you more contribution per unit, rather than the total absorption costing, which doesn't give you any idea until the end of the year. So this is why marginal costing is uh, better uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, making quick and short term decisions. All right. Did you get my point? Yes, sir. Up till now, uh, this is what we are talking about direct cost and indirect cost. This is very important concept. Direct costs are costs that are allocated. Um, based upon that are allocated to departments based upon their materials and labor costs. Okay. And the indirect costs are not related to producing goods and services, but they are related um, in other sense, i.e. advertising costs and, um, you know, costs like lighting and heating and um, um, advertising. These are all indirect costs. They don't contribute to the production but they contribute to the running of the business okay and then we said we there are allocation and apportionment apportionment is dividing the costs into smaller units and allocating them according to the centers so you got three centers you give them a small portion of each cost and they are getting that 
Okay, allocation is a concept whereby you total cost, all the costs are given to that particular department and then they do what they like with it, okay? And they can be favorable or unfavorable, all of them, okay? So that's what we talk about. Next, we have um, direct costs. Our costs are like labor and material and direct expenses, okay? So these are direct expenses, uh, direct labor and direct materials. So these are the, uh, the costs that are helpful or that are there to produce goods and services directly, okay? They are there. So direct material, so if you are producing a table, for example, your direct material is the wood, for example, or metals or screws or um, the polish that you're going to be using, okay? The labor is the amount of hours that you're going to spend on this particular table to produce. So if you're taking five hours to produce, that particular um, uh, person who's making this um, uh, table, he's going to use his labor uh, for five hours. They're going to charge, and that's known as the direct labor, all right? Polishing and screw fixing and making, uh, uh, cutting this into piece, taking five hours to produce, this is known as the direct labor, okay? The direct expenses are the expenses that are uh, used for that particular table or that particular cost only, all right? These are uh, to make uh, the product, to provide the service. So the, 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 the expenses for that could be um, related directly to the particular um, unit, okay? So the direct labor, direct material, and direct expenses are total costs, okay? Or the prime costs, in other words. Okay, and then the, we have some indirect costs uh, the, that are not related to the uh, end product. For example, you know, lighting is not related to this uh, particular uh, product. Advertising is not related to this particular product. Publicity is not related because everybody shares, uh, um, you know, every product shares all these things for you. But the direct costs are only related to that particular product, okay? Moving on, we have, um, as I told you, there will be cost center. The cost center will be either profitable, the units or the departments themselves. They will be go plus or minus. Then you have a profit center. Then you have investment centers. These are um, different responsibility centers um, that are there for planning purposes and um, making sure that the business um, makes use of these and the managers are different managers responsible for different units to make themselves um, you know accountable for these and profitable okay then you must look at the fixed and flexible budgets fixed budgets are um, the budgets that are uh, that stays fixed for um, a certain period for planning purposes these are the uh, you know budget that don't change over a particular time period okay so they stay the same for a year or uh, two years or six months or whatever, okay? For planning purposes, flexible budgets, they change, they, um, they change according to the level of um, uh, productivity or the change uh, during um, a particular um, session within the six months, they can go up and down because of the costs or because of the uh, control purposes or because of the, uh, you know, output or because of the, um, other factors that are so management might decide that they are better with the flexible budget rather than the fixed budget and um, you know it depends on the needs okay so these budgets are uh, for planning purposes and uh, for making sure that your you know organizations meets um, the objectives okay how do you prepare these budgets how do we prepare these flexible budgets it depends on the cost uh, behavior or the costs uh, that we being allocated, uh, right? Fixed cost and direct costs and indirect variable costs, all these, it depends on the different types of costings we have, okay? So you need to be aware of uh, the cost behavior and flexible uh, budgets and how the costs are affecting uh, these budgets, okay? Right. How do we compare the actual with the budget? As we told you, budgets are can go up or down. They can be actual or uh, you know flexible budgets or the uh, fixed budgets or any other type of budgets. They are um, 
there they are comparable they are there for um, uh, comparing um, you know costs or revenue or whatever right so the mainly um, if the budget is overspent or underspent we need to check why have they overspent or they underspent and that's uh, um, you know act from the actual budget and from the what you call them uh, from the budgeted budget i.e this is how much we're going to spend but this is actually we spend so this is a variance so this is the these are the variances as we told you the the variances either can be a favorable one or the um, the unfavorable or the adverse one either the, the either these can be a favorable one when the uh, when you have budgeted and you have underspent so you've left some money you have uh, money left in your kitty and you are in favor okay if you overspent from your budget that your budget has gone into adverse figure okay so you need to know why it's gone up it's gone there are different reasons why it's gone up because of the cost because of the cost of material has gone up or because you have bad planning or you have um, raised the you know labor or materials or other costs have risen during the budget and you didn't account for it so that's why it's gone uh, over your budget and then next time you review your budget next time you uh, look at your budget you revise it according to the previous experiences and these are variances we need to be uh, able to calculate and why are they variable okay so uh, in um, very important uh, because they've got to be uh, reported these variances or these differences okay so this concept of variances budgets minus the actual um, has to be um, calculated and has to be planned for and has to be as managers they must uh, uh, be accountable for these um, budgets and why budget has exceeded or why budget has um, um, not exceeded okay so this is why there is a budget and there's um, costs have to be budgeted for and the income has to be budgeted for okay so the variance is very important so absorption costing and the uh, um, um, you know the costing is based on these costs the financial costs the financial accounting is mainly to do with the general um, health of the company they don't look at the cost they don't look at the cost behavior whereas the costing uh, accounting it looks as the cost behavior and this is mainly for decision making purposes for financial accounting is for the um, financial um, uh, record of the company or the performance total performance of the company is good or bad behavior of the company dependent on the total performance do you, do you see the difference between costing or cost accounting and the financial accounting cost accounting is mainly looks at the cost and for internal um, management purposes internal decision making purposes whereas the financial is for the external to outside the world you know they want to show their accounts to the outside world to the tax authorities to the shareholders to the investors this is our business and we are doing good okay our balance sheet is good our profit is good whereas the costing is for decision making okay summit yes and this is why we need to study the cost behavior because it's for the internal performance <clears throat> internal control internal management of the business and the costing manager or the management accountant looks at these costs internally okay whereas the financial accountant or uh, uh, the general accountant or the uh, overall a uh, chartered accountant is responsible for the overall uh, running of the business and he is responsible for the health of the company not just the cost uh, inside but the overall okay so this is why we have to be um, very uh, as manager we need to be able to plan budgets and uh, variances and we need to know about the cost and we need to know the types of cost and we need to know the types of budgets okay that's uh, that's why this lecture is about budgeting and costing and the, the type of costing and the type of cost center the allocation and the apportionment of costs okay so um as i said manager is responsible for all this okay a manager a costing manager is responsible for all these type of um, uh, looking into these costs okay okay um 
and he is um, yes. very important. The next uh, thing we need to look as managers is we need to look at the uh, contribution. Okay, we need to look at the break-even point. Okay, or um, the contribution per unit. For example, you know earlier on we said uh, contribution. Uh, is um, sales minus the revenue, okay? Or sales minus the variable cost, right? The total sales minus the total variable cost will give you the contribution towards the fixed cost. And the more contributions you get per unit, the more profitable is that particular unit and you continue to produce that. And you disband the products that are not giving you good contribution. But the costing, uh, but the full cost absorption costing doesn't tell you this. Okay, so therefore, what is this um, break-even point and how do we know? Now, we, the, this is the break-even point is we need to know how much, we need to know how much contribution is that particular um, product is generating and how much um, revenue is that particular generating and or is it, um, you know, the break even is where the total cost is equal to total revenue. There is no profit and there is no revenue. All right. There is no profit or no loss. In other words, the to break even a point is a particular point um, in, uh, in a business where there's a neither loss, there's neither profit. Okay. And anything over the... Um, this particular point will give you the profit and anything under this point will give you or uh, will tell you there is a loss area and this is why the contribution is very important now you can look at this um, break even chart graphically like this or we can do that by a calculation here like this so if you look at this graphically break even chart looks uh, on the vertical side this is the vertical and this is the horizontal. On the vertical side, you have a cost or revenue in pound terms or rupees or dollars. And on the horizontal side, you have units in thousands or hundreds or millions. These are the units, okay? Then you look at the your break-even uh, chart. You can represent the total um, sales, total revenue, which is the total sales. It goes from the origin, from the middle of the unit, uh, from the middle of the graph like this, this is the both side and this is the line that's going across it's called the total revenue or total sales right because if you increase the units the sales unit will increase if you decrease the units this is uh, decreasing the revenue so that's why it goes right like this in the origin okay it's 45 degrees always will be like this then this particular thing is fixed costs Okay, fixed costs stay the same all the time and they are regardless of producing one unit or regarding of producing 100 or 200 units or million units. They'll, the concept is the fixed cost will stay the same. Fixed cost like rent, like um, you know, um, insurance, for example, they will always stay the same regardless of the number of um, contribution or number of units produced. They will always be the same. So this is why it goes like this, okay? In a fixed line, you have a fixed cost. The, the variable cost is this one here. This is the variable cost which goes up and down um, in line with the number of uh, units produced. The more you produce, the more uh, it will cost. The less you produce, the less it will cost. So the variable cost will go up and down, but the total cost will always increase, okay? because of the fixed cost is uh, stay the same. Total cost therefore equals to fixed cost plus the variable cost will give you this cost and this will behave like this, okay? Break even point is this point where the total revenue, which is this one is equal to the total cost. And that becomes in the middle there. Total revenue minus the total cost will equal to this. There is no point, there is no profit there is no loss. Can you see this? The total revenue is going to that side and the total cost are this side. And that point is the total revenue minus the total cost. There is no loss of profit. There is no money coming or going uh, or you have a, no profit and no loss, i.e. You know, you're not making anything and you're not losing anything. So this is the point where everything is equal, right? 
Yes. Anything this graph here, this is known as the positive, which is or positive revenue coming up. This is all area is profit area. Right? This is all mm. area negative area. And this is all minus uh, into the minus figure as well. Okay. So anything this below is known as the loss. Anything that goes up there is revenue is generating more. That is profit area. This is the loss area, right? And this will tell you um, what to produce and what not to produce. So, okay. And yes, sir. can you see? Yeah. Okay. So you this you can calculate um, uh, the break even by a graphic or by the calculation method. Okay. Now this um, is very important uh, graph and you just about this, what is telling you. It will tell you the profit and loss, but it doesn't tell you the margin and safe. It doesn't tell you the marginal cost. It doesn't tell you anything about that, but it'll tell you the total, okay? It'll tell you the total thing, all right? Now this margin of safety is also important. The margin of safety is the total revenue or the total sales minus the break even point. Okay, the sales unit goes up to here minus this particular break even point. So, if this is a 500 and this is 400, so the margin of safety is 100, i.e., you need 100 units to produce more to give you a good um, profit. So, the margin of safety is a warning uh, sign, is a warning um, sign that uh, to uh, be able to produce 100 units more to give you more profit, okay? Margin of safety. Let's look at uh, graphically, sorry, uh, graphically by calculation. As I said here, break-even point is the uh, fixed cost plus the profit over the contribution, right? Fixed cost plus profit, which is the uh, over contribution per day. So if a, a company, if um, something... Uh, like uh, a company of yourself has a fixed cost of 5,400 plus the target profit is included in there, okay? Then your contribution per unit, this is the sales revenue minus the costs or variable costs. So 5,400 divided by 15 minus 12, which is three. So three divided into 5,400 will give you 1,800 units. You need to produce or you need to sell these before your um, this is the, uh, you need to produce them and you need to sell them. This is the point where there is neither loss, nor profit. Okay, so this is a break even point, 1800 units. Anything above that will give you profit. Anything below this will give you a loss. All right. And this is what's yes. called break even point. And this is the break even point is there here in 1800 units. Okay. This there. All right. <clears throat> That he, okay, so that's um, that's very important for you to understand. Okay, so the uh, break even is very important. Okay, um, now the sales, um, the margin of safety is three thousand minus eighteen hundred is twelve hundred. So this can be a margin of safety here, three thousand minus the um, minus the eighteen hundred. So the gap between both of these is twelve hundred units. That's known as the margin of safety, all right? And then margin of safety is important. Uh, 1,200 units as a percentage of total sales. So 1,200, un 1200 units of uh, total sales, um, which is 5,400 divided by 1,200 will give you 40%, okay? Okay, let's move on. So this is a quick... Um, uh, you know, a, a terms and formula that you need to be able to so need to be able to know what break even, what's margin of safety, what sales revenue, the contribution, uh, the fixed cost, the budgeted um, cost or budgeted um, sales. All this you can see that from this calculation, and hopefully, um, you know, you can make some kind of uh, I head or tail, but you, I don't expect you to understand very, very quickly unless you do some exercises and presentation. You can see that graph as well, okay? So you need to spend a little bit time uh, by yourself looking at that particular issue, okay? Now, the contribution 
you can uh, show that contribution a bit differently because this one shows you the total costs in this one here, right? This graph shows you the contribution break-even chart, whereas this um, graph shows you the break-even chart as a whole, not the contribution, okay? In other words, the total mm -hmm. cost. This will only show you the contribution break-even chart, and this is a little bit different, okay? This, uh, uh, so this shows you per unit, all right? Contribution per unit or contribution concept, um, and this will give you a different um, break-even point, okay? So have a look at this. And this is shows the variable cost line instead of the fixed cost line on the break-even chart. So there's no fixed cost here. The fixed cost is, is like this. This is the, the total sales revenue, this one here. And this is the variable cost. And the, once you added the fixed cost there, variable cost goes up there plus the total, uh, plus the fixed cost, that becomes the total cost there. All this is a fixed cost. So this was shown here before. Now, in the concept of margin of a contribution, this is the way differently shown up from the added onto the variable cost and the sales revenue is shown there. The break-even chart will be based on the contribution, okay? So this is the contribution you are generating, okay? And this is the you know fixed cost. <clears throat> this will be the profit area, budget profit, and this will be the budget uh, uh, fixed budget, and this will be your budgeted contribution, and this is the you know the chart that shows you the clearly the contribution for level of production and uh, variable line. Okay. Okay. Another uh, thing that you need to be aware as a decision makers is the PV ratio or PV chart, profit volume how much to produce and how much volume you need to generate as decision makers. And this is the very important when we are talking about the relationship of cost and profit to sales and the margin of safety, when we need to decide how much to produce and what to produce, um, which is known as the PV ratio or PV uh, chart, profit volume ratio or profit volume uh, chart, okay? This, will, um, this chart shows you the effect on profit and break even point of uh, changes in uh, selling price, variable cost, fixed cost, and so on. Okay, so this is a, a quick uh, glance of that particular, um, you know, um, PV. Okay, limiting factors as decision maker, there are, um, you need to be aware of the limiting factor, i.e. the resources are uh, limited because there's no much um, amount of money that is unlimited. There is always a limit to what is available, the contribution, what is available as in terms of resources, what's available in terms of materials, what's labor, uh, you know, in terms of labor and so on. So that's known as the limiting factor. Now the limiting factor are, uh, because limiting factors are that the resources are limited in terms of money, in terms of labor, in terms of contribution. You can't go on and on and on making a lot of profit. There is a, what you call there is a limit, okay? So that's known as the limiting factor. And as decision maker, also you need to be aware of what's the best product to make in this particular limiting uh, factor. When you have limited resources, which is the best product giving you the best contribution in the short or longer run, and that will continue to produce, okay? So as you are a producers, as you are manufacturers, as you are a businessman, you need to be able to maximize or maximize the utilization of those resources in terms of the limited resources that you have. And the limited resources, it depends on the contribution per unit of each product that you are producing, okay? You want to maximize on the number of units uh, giving you the contribution per unit, okay? And that product will give you the maximum uh, profit, okay? So as you need to contribute, you need to look at the product that's generating you the best contribution and you will have to continue with that rather than um, the products that are not giving you contribution that is burden on the um, production unit or you know on your shoulder that's costing you money to carry on with that product okay so limiting factor is another uh, way you can look at the maximizing or optimizing your production plan, okay? 
Now, um, also you need to look at the, um, the costing or the costing looks at the interest rates and um, um, you know, compound interest and the simple interest. Uh, I'm not going to look at this or discounting factors like this, okay? But you need to be aware of them that they are there, okay? Costing factors has to take account into the discounting factors or interest rates um, or um, uh, limiting factors or, um, you know, these internal rate of return and payback methods and discounting factors. You need to be able to know these, these projects, which project is generating you quicker return. And you need to be aware of how long it will take you to uh, get your return on investment. So if you have to, when you are investing in two or three different projects, which is the best um, project that are giving you maximum return in the shortest possible time compared to your original investment. So these are the decision makers. Uh, you know, you have to decide based on these. Okay. So today's um, lecture combined with yesterday's lecture, yesterday's you need to look, we looked at the projects, what type of projects are uh, there uh, or the, the projects that um, generate the best maximum um, value in terms of uh, return and you choose them based on payback method or um, net present or discounted cash flow or the internal rate of return or discounted um, you know factors and today's lecture is based on the costs full cost absorption costing and the marginal costing and the marginal contribution okay you need to be aware of these in planning okay so you're looking back here for example going back onto your um, you know uh, financial and management accounting techniques for managers there are a lot of techniques for managers to be able to use them uh, for budgeting purposes for planning purposes for um, uh, variance purposes, for costing purposes, for investment purposes. There are a lot of different techniques that you can utilize in terms of planning. Okay, One of the techniques we said is budgeting. The other is uh, investment uh, appraisals. Then we looked at the contribution, um, uh, contribution concept. We looked at the break-even techniques. We looked at the, um, you know, or different um, um, types of classification of costs and into direct cost and into indirect costs, into um, allocation of costs and costs by function. Okay. As decision makers, you need to know all these types of um, things. Okay. And the, you need to know about the variances. You need to know about the flexible budgets and the um, fixed budgets and the contributions and so on. Okay. So, so all these are techniques as managers you can use, all right? Now let's um, uh, look at your uh, assignment. Now the assignment is what it is, is um, let me go on, uh, on the assignment bit, okay? Looking at your yes. task one, there is uh, how many tasks are there your assignment? There's one, two, there's uh, three, task three. There are three tasks are your assignment, yeah? Okay. Okay, so there are three tasks are your assignment. The task one asks you to um, um, prepare a leaflet, for example, okay, to prepare a leaflet, which must provide an overview of financial and management accounting systems, which provides you, in other words, uh, what type of systems are there, financial and management accounting systems. And they ask you to compare management and financial accounting system. They're asking you to analyze financial and management techniques used for recording financial information. Okay, so these are the things that you need to do too. You, you create a leaflet, you create a, a kind of a poster in other words, and you need to tell us which management and financial accounting systems are used by uh, both of these people, which is financial accountant and management accountant. Okay, and uh, compared those management and financial accounting systems. Number two, analyze financial and management techniques used for recording financial information. So in, um, you know, in, in, in this, you tell us which is the, um, 
uh, you know, what is the financial uh, technique used for recording financial information? What's the management technique for recording financial information? Okay, for example, costing, for example, um, what's the, you know, management uh, function or a cost accountant, what does they include and the financial accountant, what do they include and what's their, um, uh, you know, uh, systems, what do they use? Cost One uses costing and one uses um, the financial uh, information. A financial, in financial accountant uses the recording uh, to record the profit and loss account and the bookkeeping and the, um, you know, source materials and um, uh, invoices to get the information from there. Cost accounting, cost accountant gets the um, system from the financial accountant and looks at the costs of the materials, cost of the labor, and looks at the cost center, this type of thing, right? Budgets and budgeting. These, these, this is that you need to describe in that particular task. Task number two, okay? Task number two is, it says, at the next meeting of the board, there is an agenda item, which is uh, titled discussion of financial statements and their usefulness for stakeholder groups. This will be led by the regional director of finance and you have received an email asking you to produce a leaf drop uh, draft paper for the board meeting the draft paper needs to evaluate the usefulness of financial and management accounting statements to shareholders okay so what you're looking at here is you need to um, uh, look at um, the financial statement and you need to look at the management statement, okay? Management accounting statement and the usefulness of um, these statements for stakeholders, okay? Stakeholders are people who are um, having an interest in, in your business. For example, shareholders is an interest because they want to make sure that the business is running good and uh, they get their return back for investment. They have, uh, yeah? Whereas the management... Um, uh, accountant looks at which is the best, um, for example, whether he's recovering his costs or not. So in other words, the stakeholders uh, are not interested in cost. They are interested in the return of the overall investment they have um, put in the business. Yeah. So yes, you are, yeah, you are comparing um, these uh, costs for the stakeholders. Is he interested in the cost or is he interested in profit? You know, you know, as, as business owners, are you interested in cost or are you interested in the business uh, finance, finances, overall profit, which is useful for the stakeholders? You, they won't understand any cost. They want to know how much money they're getting for the return. So yes, you, and financial profit. Financial profit. So you compare these um, usefulness of financial profit to both um, financial profit and management accounting statements to stakeholders, to shareholders, to investors, to bank uh, and so on. Okay, so you need to look at that. And you can uh, use these uh, resources. You can go onto this website. You can look at them and make useful uh, usefulness of these uh, resources, please. Okay, or you can go onto the internet and find out what's the you know usefulness, type in usefulness, of financial and in management information accounting systems to stakeholders and you'll get some materials on it, okay? The third task is looking at this one here. The third task is, um, it says due to a reduction in sales revenue and uh, fall in group profit, the board of directors in, is investigating inventory management, credit control and current liquidity uh, in order to make man meaningful comparison. Now here, I think it needs to look at the uh, components of working capital. So you need to explain some ratios, right? Analyze components of working capital, current asset ratio, current liabilities, current assets over current liabilities, um, stock ratio, which is the current assets minus the stock over current liabilities, right? So this is the working capital ratio. And you need to explain how these ratios can be useful, okay? Right. What is working capital? How can we use it? What can you get from the, the ratio? How can businesses use? Do they find this useful or they don't find it useful? What are these ratios for? What do they measure? 
you know, how you can compare from last year performance and to this year. So this type of thing. So you need to argue, you need to look at the ratios, different types of ratios. You need to look at a, a, a one or two accounts um, and you need to calculate from the balance sheet. You need to look at them and uh, you write the usefulness of current assets and current liabilities. You need to look at the usefulness of working capital. You need to look at the uh, debt asset ratio and the useful, how we can compare one company with the other company, okay? That's why it says use ratios to measure the performance of a business in part C, okay? So the task three is pretty straightforward, um, okay? So mainly it's writing. There are three tasks for this assignment, right? So the first task is you look at the, you prepare a leaflet, you prepare a poster, small poster, and you compare your management and in from financial accounting systems, okay? You compare uh, them both, which is good, which is bad, or both they're good, okay? You look at the uh, different techniques in financial and management techniques like uh, we, we talked about. And the task number two is you um, look at um, the usefulness of um, financial um, uh, information, financial statements and management statements to stakeholders. What are they interested? You look at the uh, costs, you look at the financial statements and you tell which is good for the stakeholders and how they can benefit or they can't. And the third task is you uh, talk about the ratios, different ratios, which is the working capital ratio. You need to explain what is working capital, you know, what is a current asset ratio, what is the uh, quick asset ratio and how they can use and why they can use and what's the usefulness and how you can compare uh, one company with the other or one business to the other based on these ratios, right? So these are the three tasks that you need to look at when you are looking at your assignment, okay? Yes. So overall, a uh, little bit complicated because accounting is a bit uh, a complicated subject, not, um, uh, you know, very theoretical, yeah, but, um, you know, you need to understand the figures, you need to interpret those figures, and you need to be able to understand before you can interpret. So you have to do a little bit of work uh, on your own. And you have to yes, do, um, okay, any, any other question? Any question that you have? No, I'm sure you are not uh, with me because accounting is quite complicated or, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know leads a lot of um, work. Yes, sir. Hang, it's a bit tricky, but uh, we'll manage it. I know you will manage it. Definitely you will manage it. Uh, you go on to the Moodle. Um, you go on to Moodle and look at the resources that we have. You look at the material. Yes, sir, I've checked it. I'm so, yes, okay. If you don't understand anything, just um, uh, message me. Just uh, drop me a line or just, um, you know, uh, whatever. Okay, email. And then we will try and uh, explain if we can't explain you within this particular, you know, time framework. Okay, so all right. Um, any anything uh, you know? Any other uh, thing that you are um, not sure no, no, of? Or you want me to go over, or I know difficult, but I mean this is the time factor. We are stuck against it, you know. Sir, how much pages this leaflet should be? How much? How much uh, pages this leaflet, leaflet is? Should um, be? It says a couple of pages, maybe leaflet. Um, what is a leaflet? It's a leaflet. Leaflet can't be big. Leaflet is a small. Yes, sir, one, one page or two like this. Yes, uh, it will be. Uh, we provide an overview of financial and statements. So uh, it's not going to be big. The leaflet must provide an overview. So when you are looking at oh, uh, leaflet, it can be a one page. It can be two sided, you know, folded into three sides, small yes. um, or A4, you know, fold it into like this. You know, and leaflet is um, not very much um, big. Okay, sir. All right. <clears throat> but it, it's got to explain yeah. what uh, it is, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are finishing, we are finishing our lecture on um, this financial and management accounting technique for managers. And it was um, a good, um, I hope that you get something out of this. Um, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much for participating, Amit, Summit, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.
I'm going to stop now.